<laughs> that's why we always have to stay hungry. And I think that that makes the difference from one successful agent to another, that desire, right? And we can't, we can't teach that, unfortunately. I wish we could. I wish we'd be like, hey, look, let's take a little bit of your hunger, Kevin, and give it to somebody over here because they suck. I know. It's, and you know what it is? The, I think it's, it's hard to teach that. But I think if it's, some, if it's for someone that doesn't have it, it they can be reminded of it. You can, you can, be, you can see others. And, and I mean, it's, some people have it and some people don't. I, I do believe that um, it, can be, it can be like shown. Someone can be shown the right path. Like someone can be shown the right way to go. And you can just follow the kind of like go through the motions. But at the end of the day, the foundation of all success and failure comes down to one thing. And that's desire. If you look, if you look at, any successful person in business, anything like Tristan created the largest real estate Facebook group in the world. Do you think you had a little desire to do that? Or, right? I mean, like, did you not have any desire whatsoever? <laughs> like you had a lot of passion. I mean, there was a lot of desire there. So if, if, if our, whatever our goal is, if let's say our goal is to sell property, well, we need to be freaking motivated. We need to be like driven. That's like my, that's my ultimate goal. Every single day is my focus every day is to grow my company. My focus every single day is to go and sell property. My focus every single day is whatever my goal is. And that's why the importance of having a why, I think, is, is important. Because if, you're, if you don't want to think about just selling and selling and selling, you want to think about the reason I'm selling is because of my why. Got it. Right? That makes sense, dude. Well, I think a lot of, a lot of the situations that we have with most agents, because most agents aren't successful, is – they lose the they lose their why along the way and they lose the motivation so i think it's important to to attend these events that are out there to kind of put you in the right direction again through through that why through that motivation right because motivation doesn't last it, you you need to continually renew it and if you start off with the right motivation then we can go into this this is what what you're talking about the discovering the needs and providing that value because it's coming naturally from us. Cause dude, you, you've called, you've dialed. I mean, Jacob on my team, he just dials all day. Right. And it gets a little tiresome. So you need to have a, a huge why and you need to have that motivation and we need to rekindle that often because it's not often that we have a lot of transactions on the table and we can get down on ourselves pretty easily. So if we start slipping on that mindset, the rest of the job gets even difficult, even more difficult. Right. And that's, you're so true. So true. That's why like attending events is important. Surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded, that are positive is important, regardless of whether they're in your business life or in your personal life. Negativity needs to be out because if you're focused, if, you, if negativity is in, in your head, like in front of you while you're trying to accomplish your goal, it's, it's going to be incredibly difficult to do that. Yeah. It comes down to four things. It comes down to desire. Then it's implementation. Then it's, then it's once you've implemented, then when you have implementation, then you have, you come across problems, right? So mm -hmm. then at that point it's will. So dealing with those problems you've implemented, now you have a challenge. Do you have the will to continue? Got it. And then, yeah. right? So those three things, desire, implementation, and willpower will get you to where you want to go. And at the end of the day, like where you start getting to a crazy new level, mm -hmm. skill and the talent comes in. So that's where you're going to events comes in. That's where going to le constantly learning comes in. So if you have those four things, desire, ability to implement, willpower, and, and skill and talent, that's an amazing combination right there. And those are some of the most successful people that I know. And I'm sure, you know, Tristan Yeah, have those four things in place and they're, you know, they're, they're utilizing some of the best uh, processes out there in the industry. I agree, man. I totally agree with you. So let's talk about um, conversion. So, All right. so we're, you know, obviously a lot of the conversations that we're hearing about and it's very, very important is leveraging automation technology and and those are of course they're important but the foundation at the end of the day it comes down to engagement with with another human being right yeah so um 
So that's like all, the goal of what we're trying to do is to get in front of people. I think sometimes we forget about that with all the tech and all the stuff that we're doing, all the lead generation, all the process, all the online stuff and tools and all this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about connecting with a person. So we need to get good at those conversations to get us in front of people. So a lot of the, mm-hmm. a lot of the conversations start on the phone. And so let's talk about a, about an internet lead that comes in. A lot of us are using like realtor.com and Google AdWords, Facebook. So, and many of those inquiries come in about particular properties. And this is something that you and I have talked about so many times is don't get caught up on the, in the trap on like whether the property is active or the property itself, or is it pending? Is it, you know, the property that they've inquired about, that's just the carrot. That's just the, that's the magnet. That's the glue that's going to get you between, that's going to get, that's going to be in between you and the client. So that, so regardless of whether the property is pending, if it's, if it's active, if it's not active, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what we're trying to accomplish is to create a relationship to get in front of the person. Right. So a lot of times we get caught up on, Oh, it's pending. I've heard it so many times. Mm-hmm. It's pending. It's, you know, oh, it didn't work out. It's pending. Are, are you kidding me? Right. Like that, the property doesn't, the, the property is just the magnet. So what, what I, I like to do whenever I talk to people, if mm-hmm. it's pending, I'll say, Hey, you know, that property just, you know, was all, is, is no longer on the market, but there are similar homes available in the area. I have some other similar properties available in the area, including some that maybe aren't online, right? That I can show you. Okay. You time to go and see, you know, something. So you always want to go for the appointment. And if the property is pending, I'll still show it. And when I'm at the property, I'll, I'll ask questions like, what was it about this place is, on the, is not, not available? But what, what, I'm just one, I'm curious, what was it about this home that attracted you? What was it about this home that got you interested in the first place? Because I'm going to help you find other ones that are similar to this. So we can, you know, we can get out there and look for more property. So the property is just, um, is really just the magnet. So, so try not to get caught up on that. Um, and even if a property is like, like in some markets, it's active contingent. Do you guys have that in your area? Actually? Yeah, we do. So active contingent means that there's a chance a buyer could back out. True. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Again, I'm, I'm happy to show those, those, those places and I'll always bring a couple extra with me. So Kevin, yeah. what happens? I have a question. What happens when you, when they say I'm not interested in other properties, I just want to see that one. Great. Let's go and take a look at it. Let's go and take a look at it. Okay. I'd love to show it to you. What time do you want to go see it? What if you're not able to get into the property? So there's going to be some times where that's not an option. Um, Mm -hmm. So in that situation, first I try my very best to try to get in front inside the property. I call the agent. Yeah. I'll say, Hey, I've got somebody really interested. Um, And if you can't get into the property, I mean, it's, you can't get in the property. So what I would say is, look, that one's, there's, there's no way we can get in, Mm -hmm. but I have one that's very, very similar. That's right around the corner. Or I have something very, very similar that I can show you if you if you're interested. I mean, it's if you can't get in, you can't get in, right? And what are you going to True. do? True. So, um, but usually, if you can, if you usually you can, there's a there's a way to get in. I mean, it is, I mean, if there's a if there's a lockbox or if you talk to the listing agent, like what I'll do is I'll ask the listing agent, hey, I've got someone that's re- that's interested in the home. I see it's active contingent. They just want to take a look at it. I'm happy to pick up a key if at your office or any, you know, I don't want you to go out of your way. I'll be happy to go and take a look at, show the property in case. And they may want to write a backup offer. Perhaps it could be higher. I don't know, but I'm sure your seller, you know, would be happy to see that they're, that you're working hard for them, that you can get, that there's a backup offer in place in case this, this buyer backs out. True. Like I would do, I don't care. Would you, I mean, I, I feel like I, what if as me as a listing agent, I have nothing to lose there. Dude, I, I don't either. Right. I have somebody that's showing the property that that could be a back of it by fallout. And if I'm not having to do anything, that's even better. Right. So before the call, uh, when I do pick, you know, when I, when we do have a lead that makes an inquiry or a contact person that makes an in- inquiry, think about the objective. So the objective is we want to get an appointment. We want to get a sale. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we get caught up in the, in the emotion. Like how are they going to feel? Am I, am I bothering them? Am I call, you know, we're going to talk about also like 
the relentlessness that is required to convert at a high level. True. And that's where the mental part comes in. So we get, we, we're like, it's like, it's almost like we want to be polite or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like you want to be polite. Great. Someone else is going to get the business then. Cause if you don't get it, somebody else will, somebody else is going to take that extra step to get in front of those people to provide them with the answers that they're looking for. At the end of the day, they exactly. asked us the question, right? Very true. I'm sorry, but they interrupted my day at three in the morning when I got those emails from realtor.com and you know, multiple text messages, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, at, you know, if you want to convert, you're going to have to get over that like mental block that we have, that we've all been brought up with, with our family values and all that. You don't want to bother people and stuff. You got to, you got to block that out. This is our job. This is what we're doing. Our job is to, to sell property. That's our goal, right? So when we're calling people, um, it's about the person, not necessarily the person that, yes, the person that follows up first, right? That's important. We all know about speed to lead. How many, how many times have you heard those, that phrase, Tristan, in your, in yeah, your speed, to lead. speed to lead all the time, all the time right? But so everybody knows about speed to lead. So it's not to me the first person to follow up that wins. It's the person that follows up, follows up the most, right? It's not about following up first. Yes, it's important, but following up most. As we all know, there's a statistic with NAR. It's like it takes 13 contacts or something for, for someone to finally end up doing something. So, and at the same time, less than agents call less than 1.4 times before they give up. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> so, and in, I, think, right, so, I think it has a lot to do with engagement too, right? The, the attempts and then the engagement. Because a lot of the times you just, as an agent, we're so used to just going to the next one and not creating that relationship when we're talking to them on the phone. Uh, whether, they, whether or not they say, hey, look, I'm, I'm not interested right now. Or since I don't want to see this property... Uh, since you don't have this property available, since that's the only one I want to see, I don't want to see anything else and we can't get in, right? Uh, I think we're just, we're just naturally, naturally we tend to just want to hang up and be like, okay, no problem, right? Rather than just talk to them and see what else we can help them with. And then if, if they do hang up, know that they may change their mind three weeks, four weeks, five weeks later. So it's important to continue to offer that value to them, right? What properties are out there? I think we easily just disengage with people that, that aren't interested right now. And once we start realizing that most of the people that are out there are not interested right now, our mindset starts shifting and like, okay, so most of the people that we're going to talk to, over 95% of them or 98% of them aren't ready right now. And that's okay. Is I'm looking for the ones that are, and I'm nurturing the ones that aren't, right? Totally. And I think part of it too is the mo- emotion part, where we kind of give up after that first call. We don't want to, you know, we like you said, it's like, oh, I, just, I don't want to bother you. Or, okay, great, it's done. Well, like you just have to, you have to get over that, like over that hump. Because I I've had it. I know I've experienced it many, many, many times. Like I just want to get off the phone. Like I'm done. I don't. I don't like, I'm so happy that they say they're not interested because I don't want to, like, keep pressing them. Yeah. But, but I, I think if you look at it from a perspective of, number one, this is just a job. This is what I do. This is part of what I do. And, and, I'm, and I, I look at it as I'm talking to these people. Number one, they don't know me and I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they judge me. All right? They're not even look, I'm not even face-to-face with them. So I've got that to block block that humiliation factor. I think that people like don't want to feel like they're that person, but what, whatever that means. Um, and then I also look at it like, I just talk to them like I'm on the playground as a kid, as a friend. If I look at it from that perspective, um, it's a lot easier. And if you think about like, if we all treated each other, if you, if adults treated each other, how kids treat each other at the playground, our lives would be so much easier. Like if I just, if you know, think about kids at a playground, they're, they're on a slide or they're at the swing and they, they don't even, they have no idea. They've never met each other. True. But yet they'll walk up and say, Hey, is that your toy? Can I play? <laughs> That's because they haven't been rejected enough. Wait till they're 12. <laughs> right. 
right? But, hey, I have a question from Ashley. Yeah. What do you do when the lead comes in at midnight? Do you call, send a text, or wait until 8 a.m.? I'll send a text. Um, I'll send a text, and I'll just say, hey, this is Kevin with Marker Real Estate, whatever. Saw that you inquired about a property. Are you available for a call, or would you like me to call you tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I'm actually up right now. I can talk. So I've, act, I've called people. I know you have too, Tristan, late at night. Like I've called people really late at night. <laughs> <laughs> we have. So true. Uh, and, and the responses are actually like, wow. Like yeah. positive. So you'd be surprised. And, and we're talking about this relentless, fo relentless follow-up. A lot of times we feel like we don't want to do that because we don't want to upset people. And then we don't want to have that emotional rejection feeling. Right, which is why we avoid it. But um, most of the responses are actually positive. The two most common responses I get when I call people a hundred times is mm -hmm. either "sorry," "oh, sorry," "I'm so sorry I didn't get back to you." I know you've been trying to reach me. I've been busy. Sorry about that. Or "thank you." Oh, thank you so much for staying in touch. Thanks for your follow. -up. I really appreciate your follow up. Very rarely. That's very true, dude. That's what we've noticed. You're right on. And once in a while, you might get that person that says, don't call me anymore. or They'll respond to your text, like, take me off your list. Okay. Next. You know, it's okay. That's it. And it's just a numbers game at the end of the day. So the more relentless you are, the more business you'll get at the end of the day. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. And it's really down to desire, like we talked about, des desire implementation, will, and skill, four things. So here's kind of my process that I've, I've used and I've kind of adjusted over time. Um, so if you call and they don't answer, always call right back. Yep. And, uh, and I've even now like started playing with calling back a third time. <laughs> um, so call, call back, they don't answer, call back a third time. I don't leave a voice message mm -hmm. on those three calls. Okay. Um, I do send a text and when I send the text, I, I, I always reference the call. Me too. So it's like, Hey, it's Kevin. Saw the inquired about blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, just sent you, I just, I just called you. Are you available? Something like that. Is yeah. there anything in particular you use Tristan? I mean, same thing. I have it automated so that when we, um, when we dial the voicemail, right. And they don't return the call back. The auto text goes out and says, Hey, uh, we just we just left you a message. Just wanted to see what areas you were looking for, and whether or not you're looking for a house or a condo type thing. And then we're also calling through Agentology, and Jacob's calling too. So between everybody calling, uh, I always tell them not to leave messages the first round, the whole first round, because one voicemail has already been dropped and left. Um, but I, I tend to agree with you more. Yeah. Well, I don't leave a voicemail until until after. And if you're already leaving a voicemail, then that makes sense for what you're saying. Yeah. So again, I mean, it's not an exact science, right? I mean, these are just things that we are always playing around with, that we're always testing, we're always trying different things. But you, at, one thing we can't agree on is, it, is it's going to take multiple attempts and it takes, it's going to require you to be very persistent. Would you agree, Tristan? Yeah, dude, definitely. Persistence is, is what really separates the the mediocre agent from the, from the hugely successful one. Yeah. So I'm going to go real quick into the seven steps to convert an online lead. And uh, you and I have talked a lot about this and these are some things that have definitely helped me a lot. And uh, hopefully it's going to help you guys. So number one is you want to gain agreement. So gaining agreement means getting the yes pattern going early. Um, so for example, what that, what I like to do is, so why, why is that important to gain the yes pattern, gaining agreement? Because if you can start getting people to say yes to you early, it's a lot easier on, on, on easy questions. So for example, like saying their name, hi, Tristan. Yes. Right. So saying things and I'll get into like a little bit more detail, but asking questions that you can get easy yeses to early will create, establish a, uh, some sort of a rapport where that later when you end up asking those difficult questions, the, which is like, you know, do you want to see the property? Do you want to write an offer? 
they've already been saying yes to you so many times that it's easier for them to, to stay on that path. Versus if somebody's saying no to you, it's going to be easier for them to say no to you again. So that's why even in personal relationships, like I'm always just trying to get people to agree with me because <laughs> then I get, I get my way. And I, and I find that it's important in relationships and not just business and personal relationships too. So getting people to like agree with you easy on when you're asking easy questions is a lot. It, 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 it creates increase the likelihood that they're going to agree with you on the difficult ones. I agree. Let's get into this real quick and then uh, we can wrap it up. So, Seven steps to converting an online lead. Number one, gain agreement. How do we do that? Number one, when they answer the phone, the first thing I say is I say their name. Hi, Tristan. Yes. Yep. Tristan, Kevin with Marker Real Estate. I saw that you just inquired about 123 Main Street in San Francisco. Are you kind of thinking about a three bedroom in that neighborhood? And so again, I asked the question, are you kind of thinking about a three bedroom home in that neighborhood or in Pacific Heights or whatever? I ask a question that I know they're going to say yes to because the property that they inquired on is a three bedroom. So, right, so I'm gonna use the information that I have to help me gain agreement. So if you see they inquired about a single family home in Pacific Heights, use it, use that. I, are, you, are you thinking about a single family home, buying a single family home in Pacific Heights? Yes, right? I wouldn't say, are you thinking about buying a home in New York when they just inquired about one in San Francisco, obviously. So try to gain a cream agreement. Answer, ask questions that you know you're going to get the yes to. So that way you can help yourself later. Number two is set the appointment. So always set the appointment first. So thinking about a three-bedroom in the neighborhood, I saw you inquired about 123 Main Street. Yes, great. Do you want to set up a time to take a look at it? I'm available tomorrow or later today. When, when's, a, when's a good time for you? So try to set the appointment early. And if you can't get the appointment, that's okay. You can, continue, you can move on. You don't have to like press hard to try to get the appointment, okay? Because you don't want to make the awkward, you don't want to make the, an awkward situation. You just want, yeah. you want to kind of just keep it rolling, keep it moving. You're easy, easy going, right? So if they say, oh, I'm not available, okay, no problem. What was it about that home that you're interested in? What caught your attention? Are you kind of thinking about a three bedroom? Would you consider other areas? So number three, find out what's important. Find out what their pain points are. Find out why they're moving. Find out, you know, what it is, what's important to them, and then repeat it back to them. Right, so you're repeating it back to them. You're acknowledging that number one, you're listening. You're acknowledging what they're saying, mm -hmm. and uh, you're letting them know that you're paying attention and you're listening. You're 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 ready to, you know, help them. Um, and also, don't, don't be a robot either. Right, you don't want to sound mechanical. A lot of us use scripts. Scripts are great, but you don't want to sound like you're reading off a script. Because if you sound, I think, like, you sound I think the challenge on that is is let's say. You and I are repetitively calling for like two hours straight and we get into this rhythm, but we also get into the, we get into a good rhythm and we also get into a bad rhythm where we start saying the same thing over and over again. Right. And that's where we start sounding a little monotonous, a little, a little bit automatic and that's not always good. Right. So I like to solve that problem by standing up. Usually I have one of those stand-up desks, right? I have music, so it's always keeping me moving, and I like to take breaks in between. So, like, for instance, with Jacob, I know that he's got a tough job, so I tell him to – he can have breaks at any time that he wants. There's no, like, set time. He can take 40 breaks. I don't care. <laughs> right? He Really, he can. And the thing is just to stay in that rhythm, uh, in the good rhythm, to just get out of that automation because totally. it hurts you when you're talking to people. Totally. I, I agree with that 100%. And I usually when I take breaks is for me is when I get, when something good happens or when something, oh. or where something bad happens too. Okay. So, and when I start noticing myself, like you're saying, like I start noticing myself as becoming a more robotic, I'll take a break. Yeah. I, I agree. agree. So, um, so then find out what's important to them. And then also we want to find out if they're, are they committed to a realtor? And I like to use the word committed because again, I want them to say no to that question, right? I don't want them to say, yes, I'm committed to a realtor because then there goes my, then I've just dug myself a hole that I have to dig myself out of. It's good language. So I like to use the word committed because most people don't like to be committed to stuff. Nope. And most people don't sign buyer agreements, right? Majority of people don't, at least in our market, 
maybe in some other markets they do. So I I also sometimes throw in like, hey, you're not, I say you're not committed to an agent, agent right? Or you haven't signed any paperwork or anything. Most people don't sign paperwork. Nice. So they, no. And they're going to say, no, I'm not committed. No, I have, I have paperwork. No, everyone's scared of paperwork. <laughs> so I know they're going to say no to that. Like I just, so I already know the answers to these questions, right? Mm-hmm. So we're asking these questions um, when we already know the answer. And then do they have a lender? And I, the language I use there is I don't say, hey, are you pre-approved? Because then it's like, uh, it's almost like, an, it's almost kind of, a, I don't know what the right word is, like rude kind of. Maybe, maybe it's, um, I'm not sure. But I, I just like to say, hey, have you talked to a lender yet about financing or are you planning to pay cash? And I like to start with, I like to use cash because I like to start high. You know, I want them, I want them to feel like, I don't want to have that conversation where, hey, are you, are you, do you have a lend or are you pre-approved? And then like, excuse me, I'm a billionaire and I, I'm going to pay cash. Click. You know, so I don't want to offend anyone, you know, any hurt anyone's ego that's got a bunch of money that doesn't want to, you know, that, that um, gets upset that I asked them that are they pre-approved? So I, I like to ask, Hey, are you planning on paying cash for this property? Or have you talked with a lender yet about financing at all? And, uh, and then that creates an opportunity if they say no, or if they say yes to, to introduce my lender. So it's like, no, I haven't. Okay, great. We work with an awesome lender that I can connect you with that blah, blah, blah. Or if they say yes, okay, great. I have an awesome lender that I'll connect you with that can help you, that can show you, you know, some possibly some other rates or different programs. What I'll do at the end of this call is I'll send up an int- I'll send an introductory email. You guys can chat and you can figure it out. Does that sound good? Great. I like it, dude. All right, we're 936, man. All what right, are your last, closing words here. Last two things. Do they need to sell a home first? And then lastly is sell the follow-up. That's so this one I'm going to end with. Sell the follow-up. So if 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 all things here don't work out, mm-hmm. I want to say, hey, okay, great. What I'll do is I'll check back with you in a couple months. See how things are going. I'll send you some listings. I've got your email. And uh, if you like anything, feel free to reach out to me. Does that sound good? Yeah. So sell the follow-up. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Dude, I've been answering a couple of questions on the side, but none right now. Let's see. Any questions, anybody? All right. Nope. Cool. Oh, wait. Well, hold on. How do you convert online leads that only come in with an email address? Well, this is something I learned from you. You can tell them. I'll, I'll let you tell them. What no, you, you tell them. What do you do? No, you tell them. What do you do? Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I do a few things. Uh, number one is we check to see if the email address has, uh, is on iMessenger, if it's connected to their iPhone. And if it is, great. That's awesome. You can even dial it through uh, voice as well through iMessenger through um, what's that FaceTime FaceTime audio so if that doesn't work then what we do is we obviously email them but we also put in the email in Google to see if it pops up any name any cell phone number and in some cases in some areas that we work in uh, that email is tied to their business and it gives us their business phone number and their business name so I'll always do that as well and then we also use Spokio Spokio is something that allows you to search up information for people. And it's something that's super inexpensive. It ends up being like four bucks a month. Um, but what do you do, Kevin? Yeah, I, I, I use those and that those tools that you mentioned are really good. I, um, I'll take their email and you like what you just said, but I'm going to kind of get more detailed is take their email, copy it, put it, create a text message and then paste their email. Where is it? Paste their email right there. And if it turns blue, that means they have iMessage. And when you send them an email with their email, or you send them a text with their email, it'll actually show up as a text. So then you can get their phone number. Yeah. So that's basically, that's basically what I do. And then, of course, like we'll send them an email and try to set up a call. And I always try to set uh, an appointment for a phone call. I agree. One last thing I was going to say on appointments when we're setting appointments with online leads, the, the further out the appointment, the lower the chance they're going to show up. Okay. So 
if you set if you set an appointment today for two weeks from now and you never call them again, there's a probably a high chance you're not going to see those people. They're not going to show up. So if you do set an appointment from for a long period of time of two weeks or a week out, make mm-hmm. sure you're make sure you're touching base with them. Make sure you're sending them stuff. Make sure you're texting them and reminding them about the appointment, conf- confirming it, and also providing them with information so you can stay top of mind with them so they remember the appointment. Because if you just send a, set up an appointment, especially if it's on email, you've never even talked to them on the phone, there's no connection there. So, so try, try to set appointments early, like that day or like next day or the shorter the time frame, frame the better. And if you do set a long period of appointment, make sure you're following up throughout that time frame. Here's what, here's what we do. Uh, so, sorry, here's what I do because not everybody on the team does this. So. <laughs> What I do when I talk to someone that says they're not interested now, and we've left it where in my mind I need to nurture them or follow up with them at a later time. The first thing I do is as soon as I hang up in the notes and the reminder, I put to remind me to call them again at the time that I usually make calls. I don't randomly put it at three or five or seven or 11. I put it in the time slot that I have that I know I'm going to be making calls at that time. So I know that it's going to happen, right? Number one. Number two is I text them as soon as I'm done. I text them and I say, hey, Kevin, thanks for talking to me. I really appreciate it. If you need anything in between now, when I talk to you again, I'm Tristan. That's it. I left it. Now they remember me again. Great. And it just, it nudges them a little bit more so that in their mind, when I call them three, four, five weeks from now, there's a higher chance that they're going to remember me, right? Really smart. So that's what I do. Awesome, man. Cool, buddy. I think that's it. Any other awesome. questions? No? Awesome, man. Great call. Thank you, guys. Have a Thanks, great Kevin. Time. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.